We're in very far north central Washington, only probably an hour bird's eye flight from Canada. It's called the Methow Valley. Wasola Polana is where we're at, and it's actually in Polish, it means Happy Valley. So at one point, this did have an RV park, but even before that, it was a ranch house. It was just like a ranch, so it's okay. a typical Methow Valley ranch, like homestead. The current owner bought it and thought, you know, this is a really prime location, love the outdoors, and thought, you know, I might want to add something to the property and share this experience with people that don't normally get to do it. And so he arranged these huts the way that they are, kind of facing towards the meadow and kind of interspersed a little bit to give you that idea that you're secluded and isolated. So each hut is kind of arranged so that you don't see your neighbors. And so it's kind of what he calls for the egoist. It's just about focusing on yourself. So was it zoned for RVs? It was. There was like some sort of technicality that it was an RV park and so they had to be mobile structures. So to get around that, they added wheels to the structure and they're, they're giant, they're steel. But unfortunately the buildings are so big that they don't really move very much, but there are these huge wheels on them. Yeah, made out of steel. So theoretically you could maybe move them, but it would take a huge piece of machinery probably. Letter of the law, they're mobile. <laughs> Yes, they are. Were they, were they rolled here initially? No, so they were all built on site. Yeah, that's part of the reason why we had all local contractors because yeah, it was all kind of built from here on the property. Yeah, and the nice thing, so a lot of the, the materials have been reclaimed or resourced. So you can kind of see the, the letters and numbers that were on them originally from when they first got them. So the structures are made very minimalist and tried to blend into the surroundings. So there's a huge glass window structure around the top. So when you're inside, you almost feel like you're in the forest. Yes. Yeah, so the hut itself is only 190 square feet. So it's very small, minimalist. The, most of the, all of the huts are catered towards the meadow. So from standing here, you can't see any of the neighbors. You just kind of see out on the meadow. The windows are one of my favorite parts because you just feel like you're in the forest when you look up at that yeah. view. Yeah. The nice thing is with the people that want a step up from camping but not quite a hotel room is that they do still have some of the like basic amenities that you might need. The materials for these are just plywood. The That's handles kind of you. fit together, They're kind of like a puzzle piece. You can turn it into a twin size bed. So depending on how you want to orient it, you can have another person sleeping out here, which is nice. The mattress we have is underneath the bed here, so you can just pull it out if you want an extra bed. And then this double bed is a nice big thick mattress with another foam underneath it. It gets pretty hot in here in the summer sometimes, so we have some fan and ventilation, which is nice for the airflow. But but all the material is just plywood. I mean, all the material is just plywood, and like I said, most of it was just built on site. So you can tell like the shelves and the little side benches and tables are were built here. You can turn it this way. And they're kind of built in, in parts so that you can rearrange them how you want. You would just sit on these sides so you could have your coffee here. Another one people like to do is put it around the fire in the winter, it's really nice. You can open this up. I'm not sure how many people know how to use an axe that come to stay here. <laughs> there's no running water, but when people stay here, they do need somewhere to go. So there's a compost toilet. Every hut has a sliding glass door. This is probably where most of the people spend their time, sitting out on these chairs, the morning cup of coffee or tea. It's just very peaceful here.
because we are just right on the other side of the North Cascades from Seattle, a lot of our guests are from there because it's about a three and a half hour drive from Seattle. There. Yeah, Rolling Hudson says it. So it's kind of nice coming over here because they want a break from the city and a break from technology and they can come out here and feel like they're in the wild. Come on the Rolling Huts! You think this is the Rolling Huts? <laughs> oh cool, we have the best one. There's no TV. We don't have any real facilities in terms of a pool or putt-putt golf or something, but it's really catered to outdoor recreation. How can it roll? I think you need a big machine or something. I don't think it'll roll today. Rolling huts! I got it! Rolling huts! I can actually roll. Nicole, uh, they have wheels in the nest. You see the wheels? How do you roll it? How do you roll it, Mama? Nine. There's a kitchen. Uh, not really, but almost. And a bucket. Oh, we need to collect water. There's no water in here, right. Where do you fill it? Outside, right out front. Right Nikki helped Shimano do the one for drinking. Oh, that's better. Great, that's enough. To collect no. water? Yeah, it's camping, I like right? Yeah. It's camp kind of camping. I mean, they make it easy for you, right? You can leave open, uh, Shimera, so summer comes. Yeah, it heats up during the day. Yeah, it's metal, so it will it will cool off fast because it's metal. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Quite a Spartan, but beautiful, you know? It's probably a student, a student of modern architecture, so you have lots of uh, openings. Every single space doesn't go all the way to the to the roof, so that way you, you can expose, let's say, the structure, let's say, uh, in this case, metal beams and plywood that's that's it those are the two materials come here guys then it opens totally to the to the views you want to try one chaser mm -hmm. i haven't cooked them too long the roof does a slight slow but everything is quite rectilinear here, this uh, could be al almost a prairie style from like right type of thing. You know, this sort of glass corners. It's only glass, so there is no structure on, on them. So let's say if you look from the corner, you'll see glass and glass. Kind of feels like you're in nature here, doesn't it? Yeah. All the wood and the trees and the trees. Yeah. Yeah. The only color is yellow and the black. Can I sleep outside in the woods? Wanna sleep on your you wanna sleep on the deck with that? The only thing is I think there's some mosquitoes. And are these beds, Mama? This becomes a bed somehow, yep. Yeah. So you have to figure out how to make it work. Oh. It's not a big coffee table. Well, something. Oh, but Nikki like big Legos. Try it. Okay. It can also become a bed. Uh, so it clicks in place. I can't click it. It's like Oh cool, it goes to fits together like a puzzle. You're right, she met up. All the things are probably signature of the architect who designed this also kind of like uh, the fact that he apparently he likes to play with moving parts so in this case they had to have uh, wheels and a steel structure on steel wheels so i wonder what's the friction in there but the rest of it to me is quite a nice blend almost you know modern industrial blend in an environment that is really really natural this is called delta shelter this is the owner's house this was built first this was built in 2004 by kundig he experimented with this one first so that right piece right there of the steel is one of the parts that is mobile so when you pull twist the wheel inside that part actually shifts over to the left to hide those windows. So all four sides has like a window part and that steel part. So when she starts to twist the wheel, the steel kind of all shifts to the left on every side. See how they slide on those runners? So they're both starting to come across. So that's why they call it shelter because the windows are covered oh, yeah. and it's almost like a steel trap. 
that's one of the things that I think is most impressive. People ask me all the time, do the doors really close? And they really do. Unlike the rolling huts, which you can't really roll. <laughs> okay, Ellie, now the other way. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is the Delta shelter. Wow. It's plywood again. Yeah, so it's built with the same sort of materials as the huts, the repurposed beams. So this is the crank. So this is like the thing that it's attached to all these old cranks and goes up and it, you can see the runner right there and the pulleys. So as you twist it, the doors start to close over the windows. See the... It's just completely mechanical. Yeah. The architect's really into the industrial look with these old cranks and beams and kind of that rusted steel. <laughs> it used to be easier, I think. It probably hasn't been closed very much lately. Still doable. I mean, it's quite amazing. I would like to know what's the weight of those doors. Doors. But they have to be the heaviest shutters. <laughs> this can't be done very often. It's not. <laughs> Oh gosh. Got it! <laughs> Whew! Okay. Locked in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whew! <laughs> Did it. We're stuck in here. Okay, so this way has to be, right? Yes. Okay, now, now it's... Oh, look at it. There's these. Yeah, see yeah. these? These don't get open very much because there's the wasps. Now I feel like not nice. It's a piece of... It's a piece of machinery when you, right? Yeah. Sort of feel it's serious. It also could be like a statement or some sort of manifesto for extreme weather. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, I think it got a little bit of critiques because it's not this traditional home. And I remember originally when he built this, the concern was, well, how is the snow really going to come off the roof if it's like so flat? But they definitely were aware of how to fix it. It's a really strong home. I mean, at this point, it's been here for 13 years, and there's been no major issues with it in terms of weather. And this is a bathroom. Yeah, it's floor to ceiling wood. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, just like the huts. But it's interesting because you know people are usually afraid of that for bathrooms. Yeah, I don't. I don't, they must have sealed it with some something that made it. It's been 13 years, right? Yeah. Well, I don't see any water damage. No, there's not. Yeah. And then this is the master. Well, it used to be the master, I guess. Now, <laughs> now they have the kids' bunk beds in here. So again, these weren't in here before, so they were also built on site because last time I was here, there was a big queen-size bed here. And so they just had these built not that long ago. And there's one more room around? Yeah, the guest, well, I guess this is now the master. Yeah, same thing, the plywood. It's pretty simple, actually. Yep. Because that's kind of the idea, keeping things sort of simple here mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, it's simple inside to keep the outside as the more of the focus. And so why call it a shelter? That to distinguish it from a house. Well, isn't a house usually like in its most basic sense considered a shelter? So I think that probably matches the theme of minimalist and simple, going back to that root of being a shelter as opposed to a home. Well, can we go? To the mountains? Yeah, please. Sure, when are you guys ready to get over there? I was like, we can go to mountains. And living mostly in the outdoors as opposed to in your shelter. The most basic sense of the word, it's a shelter. You come in here to eat and sleep. But for the most part, you're living outside and enjoying the views. The solitude. <laughs>